Hello everybody, and uh, Ankara, I don't know, maybe tomorrow we can meet. So, that some not a good news, or we can write them. Um, thank you very much, Lut, for this very nice introduction. I am very much excited to talk here, actually, in, and being among the Pisidians. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Ushulai. Yes, Pisidia is a new adventure. Well, it's not new anymore, it's since 2008, actually. And today I'd like to a little bit talk about our new research in Seleucia Sidera, but I cannot actually just leave behind the 10 years of surveys that we've done in the region, which is also providing us a lot of information about the region, the landscape, and it's and and and, and our site, uh, as you see on the screen, Seleucia uh, Sidera and its environment. So I'm very excited. Please forgive me if I miss say any word or or forget anything in English, but I have a good help here. So let me start. Oops. Yeah. I found it. Uh, for those who are not very familiar with the um, Pisidia region, I'd like to just introduce where Pisidia uh, or our site actually in Pisidia is. Uh, Seleucia Sidera is not very far from Sparta, the modern city of Sparta in south um, east of uh, Anatolia. Um, and it's uh, Neighboring a lot of uh, much better known uh, sites like uh, Sagalassos, or uh, it's just in the south of Apollonia, uh, Uluborlu, or uh, where we did our very long surveys in uh, Konana in last uh, 15 years, actually. This map, I'd like to show you our intention of um, survey what we did started in 2008 for one year in Timandos, but mainly uh, the survey was uh, conducted between 2009 and 2019 uh, in the area where I just uh, colored with blue, let's, let's say it in this way, uh, Konana and its environment, and then uh, Seleukeia Sidera. The region is not, uh, actually is known since very long time. So since uh, 1892 or 1900 uh, from uh, Kippert's maps or from Hirschfeld who actually located the site or many sites in, in uh, Pisidia region. Uh, in Seleucia Sidera, there was none, no excavation until 1993 or one year 1985 uh, since, uh, until we started in 2019. There was only two, like one, two years, 1985, 1993, a museum, uh, Sparta Museum conducted uh, excavations there. And uh, the region was very much, of course, sur surveyed by um, Menart or uh, Ursait and then uh, our team uh, in the, in the uh, 19, 2019. So what we like to do as um, being a very young excavation since five years, we try to bring together actually all the information that we know from the past surveys, uh, from uh, Ursait or from Mellard, what we know. And then we uh, also have a quite good archive uh, from the surveys that we conducted between 2008 and 2019 in the survey area. And then the excavation uh, started in 2017, uh, 2019, but actually the two years excavation, 2017 and 18, uh, was under the museum. Uh, and then we have some geophysical surveys, which I'm going to try to show you. Am I doing something wrong? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, technology and me that can not sometimes work together, but anyway, we'll see. Um, we have a lot, quite a lot of archaeometrical analysis, paleoecology paleo, uh, or paleoarchaeology we started in the region to try to understand the region a little bit. And like Lut just mentioned, the intangible cultural heritage, which is my one of the most beloved 
subjects at the, in the last years is uh, actually going on um, fairly very much. Like every year we really uh, devote ourselves or our budget to try to understand the villages around us, the region around us, which also at the end helps us also to understand the archaeology, actually what we are finding in the region. So um, with uh, Dr. Chetin Shankul, who is from my university, we started also a polyarchaeology uh, project, which is very much undergoing now. It's ongoing a project now. It's not finished, it's just in the beginning, but we have very, really nice results that I'd like to also share with you. Uh, the climate characteristics or the topographical structures that spoke to us about the paleo vegetation, ecological richness of the region, uh, is they are still on, uh, on an ongoing project. So uh, I cannot say too much about it, but um, I can today show you um, a recent uh, study that we also published that you see at the corner, uh, which gives us a very important uh, information about how the site, how Salekea actually was uh, with its environment and topo uh, topographical uh, way, how it was in the in the past. So let me first show you uh, Kippert's maps. From Kippert maps, we show we see a lake that uh, is in the region just in front of Seleucia Sidera. Uh, uh, this one, right? And then he calls it Guleonu, which is actually uh, today Kuleonu or always Kuleonu. And this is pretty much the picture that uh, that you can see from Seleukia, exactly where Kipati's map was. And then here you have Kulern. So actually the lake that I was showing you today, if you go to the area, looks like this. With the, uh, he, some historical um, archives from Ottoman period, they also talk about a lake that was actually a problem for the Kuleunu village. That is always they uh, demand a professional who should come and just rescue them from this mud because it's starting to be uh, dangerous because of the malaria and things like this. So there are some uh, letters in the Ottoman um, period, um, late Ottoman period archives and a picture which is one of the last pictures actually in uh, that that you can see with the when the lake is coming up and it's uh, in its high season that it has a lot of water that it comes until today's Belediye here which if you go today there you will see it in this way luckily that lake was you can understand why actually in the late ottoman or early uh, republic period that they were really demanding this help from uh, from the state from from the main uh, when uh, actually sparta was at that time belonging to konya region so they asked tending to konya uh, these letters and asking for for a for a help of that so we decided to start to 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 see if actually uh, we can uh, detect this uh, lake and with Chetin, uh, Schenkel, uh, with his uh, research uh, center in, um, in Sparta, uh, we started a new project. And then here we started uh, to make a lot of course, and then some XRF analysis have been made, and uh, also geophysics may have been made close to the site to see where until when and where is the uh, architectural remains actually coming. Uh, and not only that, uh, the, prim the preliminary, preliminary results showed uh, actually that uh, the area was also affected from the Gurdjieff uh, volcanism. This is still not not completely finished project. Chetin is still working on it, but it seems like uh, that this whole area was also affected from that uh, volcanism. And as a result of this all coring analysis and all these uh, works, we can now uh, easily claim that actually 
uh, we had a huge lake in Paleocene uh, period, but then in later Holocene period, it became a smaller lake, and it was just actually in front of Seleucia Sidera, and all these hooks were actually just um, around the, this this lake, which we call now Paleocene Lake. Um, and most likely, uh, if the further analysis will help and, and, and uh, the results come uh, correctly, uh, this uh, summer we would like to also continue with the coring so we can redefine again the exact border of it. But this is very, pretty much very uh, close to the exact border of the, of the Palekulönü Lake. This is, of course, not a big surprise, as you know, because this region is also uh, known as a lake region, right? Like Göllar Bölgesi in Turkish. Uh, and this is also from Ralph Beck's his works, the lake, uh, who calls them lake shore settlements, that there are many actually in the, in the area uh, for today that we don't even uh, know, uh, very much see them, but there are, uh, or Bex refers for like uh, almost 40 lake shore and four nine uh, four uh, and nine settlements, um, land, um, island settlements in the lakes uh, around 2013 uh, from his uh, publication in Adalia. So this Palekulön uh, Lake can give another contribution, another uh, example for the for the area, uh, especially uh, to, to show that actually here as well, there was a, a lake until 1953, when I showed you the picture. And in 1955, with big Demiral projects, as you know, in the area, the dams and, and just like to gain a lot of ag agricultural lands, they drained and, and uh, then the, the, the lake actually is not existing, which is unfortunate today that they now try to get the water from somewhere else. So like instead of actually in 1950s, try to rehabilitate the lake, they just drained it and, and uh, it's for today completely gone. It was so much dried, the, the lake, that our uh, fossil analysis doesn't give any information about the um, forest, forest or about any kind of like pollen um, information. So what we try to do is uh, we, we still try to get the information about the, the, the forest or the pollen analysis, but as you know, that is not, it doesn't have to be exactly in the region itself or it's like very direct in the region, but it can be also a little bit from far. So the, the near, uh, uh, near uh, we we still uh, will going to continue with this, especially in the highlands, and see if uh, we can uh, give any contribution uh, to this area. Um, the hooks of this region are unfortunately, except for one year from Ormod, that are uh, Ormerod, they are not uh, excavated. So what we know is all from uh, surveys uh, information, and they are actually not intensive surveys from site or from later from Mellar. Uh, so this is not a like 100% uh, picture, but it gives us uh, a picture about uh, from which period actually the hooks are starting uh, around Seleukia Sidera. Kızıl Hüyük is the, the nearest uh, Hüyük to, to Selekeya, and uh, it has a very big potential of Iron Age as well. Uh, most of the Hüyüks, as you see in this map, are resettled during the Iron Age as well. And of course, uh, Selekeya Sidera, the hilltop, Pisartepe, was also uh, actually settled during the Iron Age. Um, in the uh, but when when you go to the Hellenistic period, you will start to see that actually the um, settlements are getting weaker around, and those Iron Age hooks are 
somehow not settled anymore in the Hellenistic period, but then resettled during the Roman period. This is really a preliminary uh, results that I'm, I'm showing to you and they need really like uh, a, a good uh, intensive surveys. But the first idea, it looks like they were more or less disappearing during the Iron Age, uh, during the Hellenistic period, sorry. What we know from Seleucia, from Iron Age, actually, they are not very much un, uh, unknown from the region. So we know them from Konana, from uh, Sagalassos, more or less, but we also, we know them from Phrygia or Lydian uh, pottery, where, where we have strict wear, where we have uh, monochrome uh, wear, which starts in eighth century and continues into the uh, Hellenistic period, into the, in, to the third century uh, BC. Uh, we haven't started to excavate at the hilltop, but uh, this uh, survey shows us that actually the site was settled during uh, Iron Age, uh, approximately from 8th century onwards. Seleucia is, of course, known um, from its uh, historical background as being one of the fourth uh, for Seleucid colonies in Pisidia, which I just uh, marked with red. These are the four uh, Seleu uh, Seleucid colonies in the, in the region. But when it was founded is a little bit puzzling at the moment. Uh, two opinions. One says that it was uh, during the, the Seleu uh, Seleucid first, but uh, that's a little bit not very much in uh, in belief or they people don't really uh, accept this and then uh, it, it, they say it was actually uh, during Antiochus the first we don't know because we don't have the evidences for this linguistic settlement yet that we can with stratigraphy that we can secure but maybe in the future uh, excavations we can try to also uh, address this question uh, but it's very much the like like this like the like the Iron Age and then Hellenistic settlements that are around it. So it was fortified and it was like uh, coming from Hel in Iron Age and re uh, colonized or resettled again during the Hellenistic period. And this is a picture that we know from the different uh, smaller settlements around it. Actually, this um, like Monana for for uh, for a long period, most likely was in the territory of Seleucia Sidera during the Hellenistic period, and then, uh, like just like Eranatepe, one of the uh, hills that was a uh, hilltop settlement that was very close to Apollonia, uh, and we uh, surveyed for a long time here, and now it's actually just recently published. Maybe you can see it uh, in the publication. So. Um, as I just before mentioned, the Hellenistic sites are very much uh, weak around Seleucia Sidera, in, in around it, but itself, it has a, a strong Hellenistic period. This is, uh, this can be maybe explained with the Sinoikismos policy of Seleucia, question mark. I'm asking to the audience if that will be a good explanation for that, because in a Roman period, you start to see that actually the whole Hyux and also the smaller settlements, like farm kind of like settlements, are coming more and more in around Seleucia uh, Sidera. This site itself is actually rarely uh, spoken by the ancient writers. Uh, Ptolemaeus mentions Seleucia as being a Phrygian in Phrygian Pisidia when he counts Phrygian Pisidian uh, sites. Uh, among them Konana or Baris or Kormasa uh, and the others, uh, he also counts Seleucia. Uh, but we have a long list of where we can see that the name actually changed during the time. And in uh, uh, from first to fourth century, it was Claudio Seleucia. But then from Heracles, in, uh, we see that it became Seleucia Sidera for the first time. So it seems like until the uh, during the Hellenistic period, it was called Seleucia. 
uh, and Tidera is actually a name or epithet that came first later in sixth century to the site. Why I will maybe come uh, in a while and, and I will uh, try to give an explanation to that as well. Okay. Uh, uh, so this is the site that I'd like to show you. Uh, the Hellenistic period and the Iron Age settlement is pretty much on the Hisartepe uh, hill here. And what we know from Hellenistic period is actually this the fortification wall of Seleucia Sidera, which is uh, Quite uh, preserved quite well uh, the uh, the gates and also the the city wall itself. And then in nineteen fifty in nineteen eighty five or in 19, uh, 1993 excavations, uh, the theater, which is in a Hellenistic type, of course, reveals a good stratigraphy for the scene building. And it was published by Kaya in 1999. And they have a layer of ash that is shows that it was in Hellenistic period, actually. So the what we see now, what we see today, uh, when we go to the site, or what we have as an architectural uh, fragments are from second century, are uh, most likely that it was burned during the Hellenistic period and then rebuilt. So what we know is a from architectural uh, part of a uh, Hellenistic period of uh, Seleucia, except the uh, city walls, is this uh, stratigraphical uh, layer of uh, Hellenistic period of this scene. Um, the theater itself, here you can see the, ge the geophysic results here, uh, cool. Uh, is very much uh, in uh, shape of what we know from Parge. So uh, the scene, the theater scene has also on front of it a uh, nymphion, just like uh, maybe the plan like in uh, in Parge, uh, what we know from uh, Parge theater. But this needs to be still uh, completely excavated here. We the, This part was excavated in 1993 and we know it now very, very well. And this part still needs to be um, open and, and finished. And then we can have the whole size of what we have as a theater scene. Uh, the geophysics uh, started in 2016 during the uh, survey uh, project. And we still continue with that. The first years have been done by Thomas Schenk from HTV, Berlin University. And now uh, my colleagues from uh, Suleiman Demirel University took over and we try to understand the extent of the site, how big it was, and what we have actually, where we have the uh, common buildings, where we have the domestic area, where we have the other uh, side. We are very much lucky actually with our geophysics. So just in the southwest of um, of the um, of the uh, side of the hill, uh, we have a very uh, good um, scene from the geophysical mapping uh, uh, Amakalum, and then probably later in a in a much later period, uh, uh, basilica was made. So we can easily actually claim that the um, the public buildings were just in front of uh, the uh, where you see the city wall and 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 the gate uh, at the south um, east of the site where we have the domestic areas at the west side and then we still continuing actually here and we hope to start to excavate one or two in one, in one of these houses, so we can see the plan and we will have a nice stratigraphy. But then it really helps us, the, the geophysical survey helps us to, to understand easily or quicker where actually the, uh, how the site uh, was uh, planned, how it was actually uh, planned. 
um, let me come back to the to the maculum uh, again. Uh, if you compare this uh, Selenkia maculum to the Sagalassos one, it's exactly in the in the same size. So you just put it on the plants on one top of each other, and and you see that it actually was in the same size. Uh, we haven't started any excavation, but we did a, an intensive survey in this area, and this is going to be, I hope, a um, nice uh, PhD uh, for uh, for one of our colleagues with the basilica itself to try to understand the Christianity of Selenkia Sidera and uh, after sixth century how it was actually built, because this is not the only basilica that we have. There are other uh, smaller sizes or bigger sizes for other in the area. Yeah, and then the necropolis of or cemeteries of Seleucia Sidera. So here we had the common buildings and here we had the domestic area. And now we know four different uh, necropolis areas where actually in number five, we, um, as well as 1993 excavations, but we also continued with uh, with a team from Groningen University under uh, Lee Divided De Jong's directorship. And uh, the cemetery shows that actually there were different type of burials, so chamber tombs, uh, simple uh, cyst graves. And the C14 analysis in uh, one from one of the chamber tombs shows that actually the site or the, uh, the necropolis was in use until uh, 8th and 10th century. So we have one 8th century uh, C14 uh, result and one from 10th century. But how actually the site was uh, settled to after 6th century, this is a little bit puzzling. So we, it, it can be that they actually again uh, Set, still settled during this period, and, and this cemetery was in use, but we still need to, um, to see where and how this uh, happened. Because from what we have as a burial uh, gifts uh, from, the, from the necropolis, it's between actually second and sixth century. So if we didn't have the C14 results, we, we would claim that the cemetery actually was, was stopped in sixth century. But there are some burials that are coming afterwards as well. The chamber tombs have different types, three different types uh, in, the, in, the, in the necropolis. And um, most of them have quite rich uh, burial uh, goods with, uh, with, with belt. <laughs> or lamps and other um, other uh, grave goods. So the burial custom for Seleucia Sidera is not only the uh, chamber tombs and, and easy uh, or simple uh, cyst graves, but in other areas from surveys, we found also sarcophagi and osteotypes. So it shows that in different cemeteries, most likely there were different type of uh, different, different type of um, burials used for the site. Um, from a Sparta Museum, how these were, how these, um, if you, if the question comes, how they were marked, the, so the, uh, these graves, from a Sparta Museum, we know that are some bust stelae that are known actually in the Seleucid uh, sites, uh, in Syria, in North Syria as well, and in, in Delicia. So those are most likely how they were, uh, or one of the typical type. And then there are these uh, very um, simple uh, stelae as well in the center. Our most actually uh, in last years or in recent years, uh, the production and and what they act, production activities of Seleucid. This is more or less came by chance or came by by um, accident that we are we uh, came across to uh, to many wine presses in the area, and one of them was excavated by my team, and it, it's, it seems like they are uh, from fifth century. So if you we start to map where the 
uh, wine presses are. They are. This is from 2018, and you can see that our many uh, wine presses actually was in the in the in the region itself, and it's around the uh, Seleucia, yeah, um, around the Hisar Hill. Uh, the pollen analysis for for the grapes and how actually the capacity was is is, a, is another project that we would like to start with in May, in the in the future, to see if actually all these uh, wine presses have been producing wine for for the site itself or how big it was the capacity. Those are uh, really important questions that we would like to um, address. If we I come back for uh, the sidera epithets, we know that sidera is actually uh, iron in, in Greek. So Seleukia sidera, the iron Seleukia or Seleukia the iron. Uh, we know this from Hierocles, but we have also some numismatic evidence. Rarely, as you know, Hephaestus is depicted on the, on the coins. But in Seleucia, we have many coins from uh, where uh, Hephaestus is actually depicted. And from, from our, oh, sorry, uh, from our surveys in two, uh, two, from 2016 until 2018, actually at the east part of uh, the Hisartepe, a lot of iron slags and like 100 kilos of iron slags came in uh, intensive surveys. Not only iron slags, but uh, but also other materials that are uh, really shows the stages of producing an iron. Uh, so uh, let me come to the uh, yeah. So we have what we have is actually the iron ore, the iron slags itself, the bloom, and then are some iron artifacts. And then we, uh, not only that, also uh, additionally to this archaeometallurgical materials, also many iron enrichment stones came in the, in the have been found in the, in the during the surveys. So when uh, the uh, uh, geophysical uh, measurements or surveys have been intensively made in the area. We started to see actually a lot of um, a lot of like uh, together with um, earth um, uh, when you analyze the earth and then the the iron uh, smith uh, particles were coming in intensively from these areas. So we decided to open one of them, and then this one, this room came to the light with many materials that shows. Exactly, this region was actually the industrial quarter for the for Seleucia Sidera, and it was uh, from the stratigraphical um, uh, stratigraphy we can easily claim it to fifth century. So, in this um, in this uh, blacksmith workshop, you have the oven, you have the um, the depot for for the core for the kumur um, made. Cool, yeah, um, and for the uh, and a, lo a lot of unfinished and finished materials also from iron uh, have been uh, found. Uh, not only these uh, iron materials have been found, but also a lots of um, uh, also bones came to light. Also, we found a lot of animal remains uh, from this uh, sector. Uh, which shows most likely that actually goats or sheep horns were also also worked in the workshop or just close to it to most likely produce such um, metal whole hand, hands or for, for like knife hands or this kind of things. The um, uh, animal remains are have been uh, started to study it actually just recently in 2022 by uh, John Yumni from uh, our colleague John Yumni and he's going to uh, hopefully continue to study uh, or to analyze the material and, and tell us more about what we can find uh, in uh, Seleukia. Uh, the area 
has many other rooms that are most likely belonging to the industrial quarter and not necessarily only produced iron. I don't want to claim that Sidera is famous with his iron producing, so it was the iron producer of, of, of Pisidia, so they were, we were, as you know, every city has its own uh, blacksmith, but most likely, or um, this is a question that we should uh, raise maybe, that Sidera was also uh, sending to other sites or to the neighbor uh, sites, uh, the semi-worked ones, and then the the um, in between like uh, worked uh, irons to the to the sites, but very clearly the east part of the settlement, the east part of the hill, was dedicated to uh, the industrial quarter in fifth century. <clears throat> also, many uh, pottery and roof tile. Uh, misfired uh, uh, fragments have been found in these areas. Here we found a lot of uh, roof tile uh, fragments and here actually we found together with, uh, with iron slags also misfired uh, pottery and a group of red slip ceramics uh, that have been most likely produced and are in uh, the uh, LRD koine, what uh, we know from uh, Sagala from Sagalasos, from uh, Poblome and Frat's publication, that were actually Seleukia, most likely also belonging to the koine uh, of the uh, of this uh, late Roman pottery production of Southwest um, Anatolia. Uh, over. 150 archaeometrical analyses have been made. Uh, so they are not only one or two analyses, but it's really secure that this group uh, belongs to Sidera or to a, a workshop close or near to uh, Sidera. And uh, at the very close to the common uh, buildings area, to the to the uh, at the at the west side of the sites in 1993, uh, many workshops have or many shops have been excavated, and from what we know from their uh, archive uh, from uh, Bingo's publication as well, that this area actually was also dedicated to to a, a bone workshop. So we have unworked uh, bones, semi-worked bones, and then. Uh, the tools are uh, completely finished tools are, have been uh, identified in the area. Uh, the stone quarry from uh, Seleukia Sidera is actually known since Bean uh, publication. He was there and he uh, nicely published it. Uh, but if these uh, stone quarries are actually the quarry that it were used for the common buildings uh, architectural, um, elements or not, this is still, um, this needs still to be uh, examined, but we would like to also uh, survey first and map the area in the, in the, common, in the, in the coming um, periods, in the coming campaigns. We do go to the villages around us. We do a lot of work for intangible cultural heritage, and we try also to, to map where we can find uh, textural um, buildings like mud bricks or wood um, architecture. And we also talk to the villagers and ask them about their life kind of buildings and how it worked and who did them. It's not very easy to find anymore the, the people who, are, who, who can produce mud brick anymore. Um, most of the time, it's it's completely gone. This kind of knowledge from the from the villages, or they are so old that they cannot show us anymore how they build it uh, or how they uh, did it. But uh, we try to to map, uh, and then uh, there's a, some, a publication of Suleiman Demira University, which you can download actually from our uh, university webpage about the um, mud brick houses in, uh, in around the Gönen and Atabey area. 
And a very interesting um, project for me is as being um, did my PhD about burial customs. I cannot get uh, enough burial customs, I think. Um, I also try to to um, to map or to understand the burial customs of last 150 years of Sparta. Uh, when I started this, a lot of people said, well, they are Muslims, they are, it's all same. But I can already tell you now, it's not published, but it's just an, an ongoing project. There are so many different details or small details that are so many different customs that they are, um, in the area itself uh, even, or between two, two villages, it's really worthwhile to, to document all of this, um, all of this uh, knowledge, what we know from, from either from the Yuruks that they have there in the highlands, their uh, graves, or in the villages itself. So uh, the region is actually very rich in this kind of things, and it's still um, a lot to be done in, in Pisidia, as you know, as well. Um, and, uh, we try to combine our archaeological methods, uh, the excavation, the survey, intensive survey, together with this, um, maybe from what we know or what we can gather from, his, from, uh, from the historical, uh, archives from Ottoman period or, or still from the people who are uh, still there. And they are really uh, very, very much um, helpful information comes to us. So I think that uh, I will finish now. And I would like to also thank all the team uh, and also the uh, support uh, institutions that supported our surveys, excavations, and intangible cultural heritage projects. And um, if there are questions, I'm, I'm ready to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this uh, for only five years excavation, I uh, must say chapeau. Uh, it's uh, very impressive and um, I mean, of course, there are quite a few years of um, survey too. So, but um, I'm sure that there, uh, was that the idea? <laughs> All right, it's back, it's back. Uh, you want to be on screen? Yes, it's fine. It's okay. So uh, let's start before we open the, the floor here with the question from uh, Dr. Jack Skelton Wallace um, regards to you. Oh no, okay, that's that's not a question. But uh, anyway, if there are questions, please write them in the Q and A, uh, and then we will uh, read them out here so that everybody here in the in the room can can also. Sohbet is normally uh, the chat people saying I'm here. Yeah. So, but uh, all right. Then let's first let's first uh, have a look at questions from the room. And then afterwards, we will uh, we will have a look whether anybody else is asking a question from uh, online. Elif, please. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of questions in the online. It's very exciting. I have a question. I have several questions, but I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> and you feel this is the eye, and it's so yeah. blurry. Yeah. Which is very it is, isn't it? It is, there is an inscription under it. I forget to say that, yeah. Uh, being published it actually. So it, I didn't want to talk too much about it because it's already published. Um, it's like protection of the of this quarry, this stone quarry and, 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 and everything. So the, the, the inscription also in that in, is in that way. There is one from Pisidia, I forget now from where, but there is one, I will tell you. There's another one. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. No, it's not in a quarry, but there is another one on a stone. Uh, yeah, I'll find it out and I'll let you know. Uh, 
Oh, uh, the question was, uh, and apologies, we should have uh, thought about that, uh, about the evil eye that was carved in um, in one of the facades of the quarry, one of the faces of the quarry. So that was the question, and the answer was there are others. Anybody else? Then maybe I will also ask a question. I mean, uh, I was very impressed. So um, in your geophysical um, survey, it was very clear that there is a monumental center uh, with the Macellum and then later also the early Christian Basilica. Mm -hmm. um, is this the extended city from the Roman Imperial period? And do you have something that indicates that in the Hellenistic period, it was all on top of the mound? Or are these the only indications of monumental architecture that you have? I mean, at the moment, because it's not excavated, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Or do, are there traces of monumental buildings and public monuments on the mount as well? Um, there are reliefs mm -hmm. from the Hellenistic period. We know that the pit is also from the Hellenistic period, is actually not far from that, from that area. It's very difficult to say if this public building area was also in use in the Hellenistic period, because I really don't know. But the site in the Roman period is really becoming extended to the, to the whole valley. And my first idea is actually the, the, these common buildings of Roman imperial period were first founded or, or this area was first during the Roman period actually used. And the, we should also not uh, forget that the Hellenistic period of the theater is not that early. So it's like late second century, early, early first century mm -hmm. BC. So for me, for now, from the surveys and the others, but that can of course change with excavation. It seems like the Hellenistic settlement was on the hill. And in later period, it started to extend to the to the Ova, to the valley, to the with other exactly. Yeah, it will very nice. Yes. Repeat the schema or the the picture. Let's say uh, yeah. yeah. It's a very dense occupation. It is a very dense yes. occupation. We have more than we have identified uh, at least three more. Uh, basilicas that uh, from the uh, except the, the one that I showed today. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. thank you very much for this amazing presentation. Pleasure. Yes. <laughs> I, I was amazed when you said. Looked at the burial, burial uh, customs and there was so much variety. Yeah. Because one thing is that you know you go to a village in the northern Syria and you are going to find very similar burial customs. And as far as I understood, that was not the case. No. Do you see some like cultural continuity in terms of like ancient practices to today, or is it more like? Different practices among different communities. Wow, I was very wait, 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 wait. Sorry, so the question from the room is just in case uh, not everybody got it. So, um, Bilge said that she's uh, looking at the um, modern uh, cemeteries around the site and in the neighborhood, in the villages in the neighborhood, and said that there were quite a few different, um, different kinds of shapes and uh, possibly uh, different burial customs. So, if I ask whether you can see different um, traditions. Continuing over a longer period of time. Here we are. Four phases. Very interesting phases uh, that we identified so far. One of them is in uh, in Sparta itself. In one, there are seven different cemeteries. Uh, four of them are really old ones that they used also in the Ottoman or late Ottoman period. Uh, in one of them, uh, they told us that they still put. Uh, some some presents, some like, um, and I want to say, to speak in a cool way, like you know, like if it's a man, they just put it in the in the grave itself. In other cases, what I know from like from other uh, ancient sites, if they come across to a older uh, grave, they just collect the bones, put them in a bag, put a lira or a five lira in the bag, and put it in the corner of the new buried 
or re will be renew buried person. We know this from ancient ancient burials as well. So and respect to the older burials, even if they don't know who it is, who who was that person, they just collect it, put it in a bag, and put the money like. Mezar <laughs> hak. Uh, I don't know how to translate that. It's very interesting. The oldest one say Mezar Hakka. Mezar Hakka. Grave right. Something like this. Hmm. Well, I see. That's very interesting. Yeah. In Usha. Nice. Is it clear that in Usha there is the same tradition where uh, people who passed away uh, before burial, uh, a coin is put underneath the tomb, I think, and uh, the grave, graves are referred to as Hayek, as a uh, box. That's why. Yeah. Uh, yes. Let's. All right, let's have a look whether we can open this. Uh oh. Why? I can ask it. Yes, please do. Oh, uh, no, oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Need the uh, biggest touch. Okay. So, Anja Slavish asks, um, thank, says, thank, you, thank you very much for this great talk. We all agreed on that. These are really impressive results. In your opinion, what did people live from? Agriculture, trading iron, taxing traders, and secondly, when and why did the settlement end here? Mm -hmm. It's a good question for Pisidia. Yeah. <laughs> the last the la let's start with the last one. I would really like to know when and why the, uh, the site is, uh, is ended because Lut will uh, help me in this, I'm sure. It's not that easy to say if this, if, because we don't have later pottery than sixth century in the, in the necropolis, so the site is died. That doesn't work for Pisidia. We still need to know how and, and how we're going to deal with the later material, right? So this is a question I cannot answer now, but I know that actually until the Salchuk period, uh, the theater itself was in use, not as a theater, but as a camel um, uh, compound. Uh, because Seleukia in later period, after sixth century, it seems like it loses its importance and Agraya starts to be more important. Uh, what we know from the, from the, from the lists. Uh, so this why and how, maybe it's also related to the lake, that the lake started to be problem in, already in seventh century, most likely. But those are questions we really still need to, to answer ourselves as well. From what they lived, um, it seems like in sixth century, iron was their most important production. Uh, agriculture, of course. Uh, I mean, for such uh, for such sites, is is not uh, very um, uncommon. And wine, most likely. I don't want to say they they send wine to everywhere and they became very rich from wine, uh, but it seems like the wine production was. For the site itself, and the new, and maybe the you know like the the not the macro economy, but for the mi micro economy, it was uh, another tool that uh, was important for the for Seleucia. We always talk about the wine. Mm -hmm. What about olives? We don't have any olive. Uh, you know, the, you can separate wine and olive production. Stones, yeah, from Klozomina, I know it very well. It's a little bit different two types how you what you have as an equipment. We so far we don't have any olive equipments there for 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 uh, for olives. And what we know from again from like late nineteenth century Ottoman records, uh, grapes was in Agros in our region. Um, a very common thing to to produce. So when they uh, talk about the taxes of what they what they uh, had in in the village, olive is not there. 
No, it is there now, oh, yes. but not, not by then there is not. So we don't, we need still pollen analysis, more pollen um, work. Yeah. Most likely, yes, because we have these uh, uh, traces. So, so uh, the realistic yeah. fortification okay. walls was uh, the stone quarried from the bedrock and then reused as part of the wall. There are in some 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 traces of of in the in near his artifact itself that some that they cut the the, the stones uh, from from the hill itself and and use it and also the bedrock was used as a found, foundation for for this so they it, it's a very hilly and a lot of rocks are there of course in the on the side on on the top of the uh, his artifact so they the foundation of the of the walls are actually cut to the bedrock. Itself. The one of them, yes. Mm -hmm. One of them, yes. Cut. So the question is where the iron comes from, where it's locally produced, or, or it comes from somewhere else. We have a uh, couple of ideas about about that. Not from far from our region, near or south of Konya, there is an important iron uh, um, production and also quarries. We still are in search of where the iron that was from Selevkia close to us, or it came from close to us, or not. This really needs more analysis. We need to. To analyze a lot of um, a lot of things, and this has haven't been done yet. But the survey to to try to understand the um, our our region and what was actually all around the region or the territorium of Seleucus, there is going to be a, a nice PhD, I hope, in the future years and coming in coming years. And this is also in, involved in it, like Kainatlar, where where they were the resources of. What we have also the water uh, is a very important question, of course. From where did they brought actually the whole water? Because like systems and everything for the hilltop, it works. But if you have such a vast, big uh, Roman period site, you also it is not enough. The lake is is of course an important water source, uh, but the question is if it was drinkable water or not drinkable water. This is another project is going to be done actually in in next years with some analysis. Uh, so the Territoria of Seleucia Sidera needs to be really studied. And this is going to be a, a PhD of one of our team members. Uh, we have ideas in your data sets or for other people because they will interested with the digital data management for actually and often actually. So, and also the geophysical results uh, and uh, the value environmental study that around the region. So, are you sharing your data sets or are you have a plan? If I'm sharing, yeah. All right. Uh, so, Tunis, the data sets that we saw from uh, ceramics, uh, the geophysics, uh, all the different uh, studies that have been done, are they available? Are they? Open sporting open access, or I love to do that. I don't want to keep them for myself, <laughs> but um, you will agree with me that is not that easy to to manage the digital ar archive. First of all, to to produce such an archive, and I mean, um, like I have two team members now here. And they're laughing and saying, oh, God, this is the question that should not be asked to Hoja, because I'm all the time like, how are we going to do this? Uh, we are very much in, in need of help and ideas uh, in doing this. 
Uh, we have a web page where we try to actually also open uh, some sources. We try to, um, I mean, if there is any material that any person or any uh, scholar or any researcher is interested, it's always for, there for them. But the data management is a very difficult and very important, but very difficult set of uh, homework that is waiting for Selepia Sidera. We try to, to set such a, such a data, data, data management and, and, and then, because we have to manage it first to be able to share it, right? So yeah, it's, um, it's a question that really uh, gives me uh, sleepless. sleepless nights. <laughs> But I'm, I'm very much open to any ideas, any help, any... Um, <laughs> yeah. Have a discussion. Is there are no questions, you know, with one on Zoom for joining us tonight. And uh, in that case, the Zoom, Thank you, and thank you very much for having this is great, very much. How can you download this thing's number? Yes, it's a piece.